What's up everybody? It's Comic Quarter 410. For Black Friday, I hit up two sales, one on Wednesday and one on Friday. One shop had 70% off their variant covers and 70% off both their modern and bronze age back issues. The other shop had 40 to 60% off all their back issues. So I did pretty well. But for the sake of time, I'm not going to show a bunch of the run filler books I picked up. And before I get into any of those sale books, I did another trade with my good buddy Evan Leahy. And as always, Evan, I'm very, very happy with the books you sent. Beautiful copies. Thank you so much, especially for being generous enough to part with this book. Evan knows I'm a big Transformers fan. And he sent me this New York Comic Con 2010 exclusive variant to IDW Transformers 12. My understanding is this book's pretty hard to find in the first place, but... This copy is triple signed, it's near mint, it's stained to make it look aged, but it's a near mint copy. And it's a cover swipe to X-Men number one, done beautifully by Casey Collier, who signed the book right there. I'm not sure whose signature that is, so Evan or anyone else, if you know whose signature that is, please let me know, I'd really appreciate it. But I was really stoked to see this signature on there, Michael Bell. For those of you who don't know, Michael Bell is a pretty big voice actor from the 80s. And he did voice work on some of my favorite cartoon series of all time. He did the voices of several Transformers on the animated series, including one of my favorites, Sideswipe, who's there on the bottom right of the cover. But Michael Bell also voiced Lance on the Voltron cartoon, which is another one of my all-time favorite cartoons. And he did the voice of G.I. Joe leader Duke on the G.I. Joe animated series, another one of my all-time favorites. So I'm so stoked to finally have something signed by Michael Bell in my collection and Thank you again, Evan, for sending me that book. Evan also helped me finish up my Dark Horse Ghost in the Shell miniseries. I already have issue one in the ash can. So Evan traded me Ghost in the Shell 2. Beautiful cover work here by Massimune and Shiro. Uh, Ghost in the Shell 3. For those of you who don't know, his vehicle tech and weapon design is so amazing that when the Japanese government saw his work on Ghost in the Shell, Dominion Tank Police, uh, Appleseed, they were so impressed that they actually hired him to design, do concept design for government vehicles and government weaponry. And uh, I think that's a pretty unique story. You don't hear about too many creators from the comic industry crossing over like that. But he's, he's one of the best writers and artists in the comic business, in my opinion. Very underrated creator. Ghost in the Shell 4, another beautiful cover. I'm a big fan of this anime. I hope they don't screw up the live action movie. Ghost in the Shell number 5. Number 6. Number 7. And number 8. So thanks to Evan, I now have my Ghost in the Shell miniseries complete. And my Ghost in the Shell Volume 2 standalone complex is also complete. So thank you again, Evan. Appreciate everything, buddy. Now at the sale, picked up some, some stuff. This book was less than a buck. Uh, was missing the final issue of Conan the King. This is issue 55 with a great Adam Kubert cover. I always grab the giant size Marvels when I see them for a decent price and got giant size Kid Colt number one. Grab this nice copy here of Invaders Annual number one with this stunning cover by Golden Age legend Alex Schomburg. And he is one of the greatest, greatest artists of all time. There's not many people who could touch his work in the Golden Age. <clears throat> Almost finished my Howard the Duck run. Got these nice and cheap. I already have the 30 cent test cover to Howard 3, but I needed the regular. And I really like this uh, Rich Buckler cover parodying Shang-Chi Master of Kung Fu when he was big in the 70s. Got a really nice copy of Howard 7. I think Steve Gerber is so underrated, especially his his work on this book. Uh, took a lot of people a long time to realize the genius behind it, but got this near mint copy of Howard 8. This was only a few bucks. Howard 14, a parody of Hellstrom. Howard 15 with Dr. Bone, great character there. 
Howard number 19 with a great, great cover swipe of John Romita's Spidey. Howard the Human. And I got Howard 33. I think this might be the last issue. If it, if it isn't, it's like one of the last couple issues. But uh, Brian Boland cover. Great, great cover and a nice copy. I think that was like a buck. And uh, got Adventure into Fear 14, which I need for my Man Thing run. And that was just a few bucks as well. So happy to get my hands on them. Grabbed uh, New Gods number six. Has some slight condition issues, but it was very, very cheap. I already have my Forever People run completed. I already have Jack Kirby's whole run on Mr. Miracle completed. I still need some other issues, but I, I really was slacking on completing my New Gods run. I have one and two and six and maybe two other issues, so I need to start getting on that. So I grabbed that when I saw it. And I also got the... 1984 relaunch to New Gods number one with this Jack Kirby dark side cover. Again, another series I'm almost finished my run on is DC Comics Presents. I only need a few issues and I have all the even remotely expensive issues knocked out. But I needed number 50, so I grabbed it with this Rich Buckler cover. Again, Rich Buckler. Got a lot of got more Rich Buckler in the sale than I thought, but uh interesting team up with Superman and Clark Kent against the Atomic Skull. Grab some Neil Adams Superman cheap, and this is 234. Superman 240. The cover's uh, definitely off color. This could benefit from a dry clean, but very, very excellent Neil Adams cover there. Superman 241. That one's in much better shape. Superman 250. Really, really love this Neil Adams cover. Great stuff. And. That one is in nice shape, and this one's in really nice shape. Superman 251. So, happy to get my hands on them. And also grabbed, I uh, think this was a buck or two, Superman 400. I really like what they did with this issue and Batman 400, where they had that amazing list of artists on the left-hand side of the cover there, all jam on this issue. And uh, really, really cool concept. So, I like those two issues, so grab that up. Got some some cheap variants. Like I said, these were 70% off. If I can keep them from falling. Got the Author Soy Dam variant to George R. R. Martin's Wild Cards number one. Got the one in ten variant to Rye number one. Really, really like this series. Uh, Clayton Crane's art was incredible. You don't see painted art of that caliber. On an ongoing book anymore unfortunately he did a bang up job on that book got this variant to idw's rocketeer adventures number one it's an older dave stevens rocketeer piece but still amazing nonetheless um got the retailer incentive variants to lock and key omega number one and number two these series, uh, the first one and all of them, just amazing, amazing reads. Uh, I think it's probably the best horror comic to come out in the past 15 years or so. If you like horror and you haven't read Lock and Key, do yourself a big favor. Got this great sketch variant to Godzilla Legends number one by Arthur Adams, another one of my favorite artists. Got this Action Comics 900 variant for three bucks. This beautiful, beautiful... Adam Hughes variant. It's an homage to uh, Neil Adams' Superman work. Got this 1 in 25 variant to Superman Unchained number 1. Stunning cover by Lee Bermejo. I always like his work. And got this Mad variant to Superman 19 by the great Al Jaffe. Homage to Action number 1, of course. Got this beautiful... Joe Jusco Virgin variant to Warlords of Mars number one. What a cover on that. Couldn't leave that there. Got this John Cassidy uh, re retro Avengers 50th anniversary variant to Avengers 19. Beautiful, beautiful cover. You, know, you can't argue when you're getting some of these variants for undercover price. Now, it's escaping my mind who did this Iron Fist variant to Iron Fist 27. It's a beautiful cover. 
I could take a stab, but I'll probably be wrong. I'll have to look that up, but was not leaving that one there. Got the Wizard World Philly exclusive sketch variant to Daredevil Father number one. It's a Joe Casada cover. My buddy Evan just picked a copy of this up at a sale too. Uh, this is the 80 Granov variant to Daredevil 11. I believe this is a 1 in 25. Beautiful, beautiful cover. Finally got these two Punisher number one variants I've been looking for for a while. Really wanted this one. This is the Neil Adams variant to Punisher number one. And these were both three bucks. And the Sal Bashima variant to Punisher number one. Sal Bashima, excuse me. Um, another artist I really like who's really starting to blow up, Nick Bradshaw. Loved his work since he worked on the Army of Darkness series that got a Scream Award. And he's really blossomed into a great, great artist. Did this variant to Star-Lord number one. <clears throat> Always grab Amazing Spider-Mans if they're on a big sale. Um, quite a few of these are doubles, but... When I see Amazing Spider-Man books for cheap, I'm going to grab them. Got Amazing Spider-Man 110. This I did not have. I believe this is the first appearance of Gibbon. Got Spidey 128. Pretty decent copy, especially for, you know, what I paid for these. They were all, like I said, they were either 50 or 70% off, depending on which store I got them at. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 132. Amazing Spider-Man 168. I'm very fond of this book. Uh, this is an upgrade for me. This is one of the first three comic books I ever read as a little kid. It's one of the first three books I ever owned. So, got a nice upgrade to that. Always love that color. Bright and nice. Just the color palettes they used on these Bronze Age Spideys. Just very, you know, I was, I was talking with Comics Quest and Evan Leahy and Tom Ryan about how just how eye-appealing the, the Marvel covers, especially of this era, were. They're some of my favorites. So, got uh, Amazing Spider-Man 173. Already had these, but for the price, I wasn't leaving these these early Punisher appearances. I feel they're a bit underrated and undervalued as, as it is. And with them on sale, I grabbed them up. Got another copy of Amazing Spider-Man 174 and 175. Amazing Spider-Man 176, 181, that's another double, I believe that's an upgrade, I'm going to have to check and see what my other copy looks like, but uh, Amazing Spider-Man 189, and another, this is definitely an upgrade for me, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 202, great Keith Pollard and Joe Rubenstein cover there, love those early Spidey Punisher appearances. Waited a bit too long to get these. Um, many of you know I'm a huge Jim Steranko fan. I already have really nice copies of Nick Fury 1 and 2 that I got him to sign. So with this sale, them having these books, uh, the prices were more than right. So finally grabbed this beautiful Jim Steranko cover to Nick Fury number 3. This copy is a little off color. I am going to upgrade it at some point and get a nice white copy uh, because this is one of my favorite Jim Steranko covers of all time. Definitely my favorite Nick Fury cover he did. Nick Fury number four. His layouts, they stand the test of time so well. Nobody can do a cover layout like Jim Steranko. And this cover has been homaged and ripped off so many times. I think this is one of the greatest cover layouts, cover designs of all time. So gonna gonna get a nicer copy but the price was so right on these i was not leaving them there uh this is a pretty nice copy and again another stunning layout uh to nick fury number seven and then i got this this was only two or three dollars uh this is the early 80s relaunch of nick fury agent of shield with this beautiful jim steranko cover it's actually a wraparound so can't get enough steranko in my life Got a nice copy here of Marvel Scooby Doo number one. Got Goon number seven, and this is a not only a great great read, 
uh, Mike Mignola worked on the issue, Hellboy's in the issue, and Mike Mignola did this cover, so that's an amazing book. I already have this run completed, but I'm not going to leave a, a near mint copy of From Hell number two there for $2, so grab that. Grabbed Hellboy Weird Tales. I really love this series. I need to finish it off. Some of them are hard to find, especially around here, but this cover has, or sorry, this has a great Mike Kaluta cover, and yeah, Evan Dorkin worked on it. Kia Asami, another one of my favorite Japanese artists, and John Cassidy did a Hellboy story in there. So that's the kind of cool stuff you see in that series. I know I really want the Frank Cho issue. This was in my poll list, but I just picked it up while I was there because I wanted to read it. And I'm a big fan of the Vampire Hunter D animes. And this is the first attempt by Americans at a Vampire Hunter D story. And I have to be honest, I was pretty pleased when I read issue number one. I'm not familiar with this artist, Broussard. He did this cover. And the interior art's great. So I'm really looking forward to reading the rest of these. Uh, so far, they've done a great job. And I also got the variant... The J. Lee variant to Vampire Hunter D number one. All right, to wrap it up here, got this Batman uh, 253. I believe this is also a Kaluta cover. I could be wrong, but uh, crossover with the Shadow should have had that a long time ago. Got Batman number 262. Like I said, always like getting the DC and uh, Marvel Giants. Got Batman number 314. I believe that's Jim Aparo cover. This The price on this was really nice. It has some problems. Uh, it's not horrible, but it has some minor problems. And the uh, price was really right on this. Batman 194 classic Carmine Infantino cover. Really, really always wanted to get my hands on this book uh, DC 100 page spectacular Batman 238 guest stars galore can't wait to read that got a really nice copy of uh, showcase 66 this is first appearance of Bawana Beast and it's in really nice shape has some minor stress around the staples but really nice copy and I believe this after discount was only like 12 or 14 dollars so uh Got the Heap number one from Skywald Comics. Never see those out. Probably not worth much, but I wanted to get it. And uh, the pickup that made me the most happy. Got Fiction House Publishing's Spirit number one from 1952. Uh, you know, obviously the first spirits were newspaper. They're incredibly hard to find. Uh, they did one, I believe, one volume of the spirit before this. And, of course, uh, he was in police comics. But very happy to get my hands on Will Eisner's The Spirit number one from Fiction House. Beautiful, beautiful cover. Obviously has some chunks out of the spine here. But uh, this one, they, their Golden Age books were only 30% off. But this one, after the discount, was only like $30 or $35. So I had to get it, and I'm very, very happy to own this book. I, I always say Will Eisner is like the Walt Disney of comics, if Walt Disney could draw his ass off as well. So uh, very, very important books, very important work that... Uh, that Will Eisner did. And if any of you haven't read his graphic novel, The Dreamer, do yourself a favor and pick that one up. It's just a really, really great insight to the behind the scenes of the comic industry in the golden age. And it's funny how some of that stuff hasn't changed. But very happy with what I got. I always appreciate all of you stopping by. Thank you for your time. Take care of yourselves and enjoy your comics.